Hello, and thanks for tuning in to another edition of City Beat. I'm your host, Tamika Keena Norman, and this is our first show for 2019, and I wanted to make it an exciting one, and I personally think it's always exciting when we do a show about parks and recreation, and of course, the Imperial Center for the Arts and Sciences. And joining me today is probably a familiar face, Lee White, Curator of Education for the Children's Museum and Science Center. So hello and welcome back, Thank Lee. Thank you. I know, we've had you on the show quite a few times. Quite a few. We're always happy to have you come over and see our fun new exhibits that we got coming in. Thank you, which means that we have a new exhibit on display now. This one is called Be the Astronaut. So tell me a little bit more about Be the Astronaut. Well, Be the Astronaut kind of looks at space travel mm -hmm. and what it takes to get a rocket out of our atmosphere. Um, you can decide whether or not you want to go to the moon or Mars or Jupiter, uh, what it would be like to land on that planet or uh, our moon, and then also to drive rovers on them. So some of the uh, exciting and challenging things that come with space travel. Wow. So how did the idea come about for this particular exhibit? Why did you decide to choose this one? Uh, well, we haven't really had a lot about space, mm -hmm. um, so we thought this was great. It goes along wonderfully with our program in our planetarium, be the, uh, which is called Astronaut, which is a okay. really fun show mm -hmm. for all ages. Um, so this one just looked like a lot of fun, in, um, and it also has a, a video game type of feel to it, which I know is really popular with kids. So we thought this would be a great way to teach some physics and teach some about space travel in a really fun way. Okay, so is this the first time that you know of that an exhibit like this has been on display in a museum in the state of North Carolina? This is Be the Astronaut's first visit to North Carolina, yes. Mm. It's been to California, New York, Texas, Illinois. It's been a lot of different places, but it, this is its first visit to North Carolina. Oh, so that's exciting, not only to see the exhibit, but to know this is its first time here yes. in North Carolina. Now, you mentioned some of those um, STEM, STEAM is what we call it now, mm -hmm. subject science, technology, engineering arts and mathematics that this exhibit focuses on? Uh, it's very physics based. Mm -hmm. um, it, with the space we're also talking about gravity um, so and a little bit about um, you know travel. Okay and we were talking a little earlier I said this exhibit looks like it's for the more mature students mm -hmm. but you said there's something for little kids too. There is. Mm -hmm. uh, so the content is more based for a little bit older maybe second grade and up but um, you know I've seen younger children come through and they're having a lot of fun playing with the joystick and the touch screens and and learning also. Okay so what do you hope folks will learn or get from this exhibit not only kids but you know parents who bring their children to explore too. We've had some parents and grandparents come through and uh, I think everybody's learned a little something while they're uh, playing the games and exploring with the exhibit so we just hope that people see uh, some fun with science and a fun way to, to learn and um, you know video games can be educational. Yes they Don't can. tell the kids. <laughs> And my son loves them already. He's four. He already mm -hmm. loves video games. But tell me, too, what it takes to set up a display like this and how long it takes. Because you all closed down for um, a lot of December, January time frame setting up for this. Yes, we closed down for about two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, about four or five days of that is to get one exhibit out, get mm -hmm. it uh, dismantled, packed up have trucks come in. There are usually two or three trucks that it takes to move an exhibit. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we bring the new one in and we have to unpack everything and set up. And that usually takes four to five days. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, uh, yeah, it takes a little while to get everything situated. Yes. Yeah. What type of feedback have you gotten so far from this? And I know you opened, what, what date did you open? Uh, we opened January 22nd. Okay. So what type of feedback have you gotten so far? A lot of positive feedback. Mm -hmm. um, of families with all different age children. So we've had families that have teenagers um, and their younger children, they come in and it's great to see the kids playing together on the games. And uh, like I said, the younger children just like pushing the buttons and, and playing, but the older children are really learning a little bit more about what it would take to travel in space um, and some of the physics behind maneuvering things. Exactly. First Fridays are always a great opportunity to come through free admission yes. to see the exhibit. Tell me about your other hours and, and times and costs to get in. Uh, we're open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 5 and on Sundays 1 to 5. Uh, general admission is $6 per person and that includes planetarium shows throughout the afternoon so mm -hmm. you can see all the shows we have. On Sundays uh, we do have a free admission for City of Rocky Mount residents every Sunday. That's great. That's great. What I want to do, like we always do, is I want you to show me a few aspects of this um, exhibit. Not everything, because we don't, we don't want to give away everything. Right. We want people to still come. <laughs> so I want you to show me that. And we'll be right back in just a moment with Lee White, 
at the Children's Museum and Science Center. Got a quarter? Hello and welcome back to City Beat. If you're just tuning into our show, we're at the Children's Museum and Science Center talking about the latest exhibit, Be the Astronaut. And joining me is Lee White. As always, she takes me on a little tour. And right now we're inside a virtual spacecraft. So use your imagination. And Lee, tell me how this works. Uh, this technology is similar to a video game mm -hmm. and a lot of the science is based on NASA the company that built this the Eureka exhibits did a lot of work with NASA to make sure everything is recreated as close as possible to being accurate scientifically mm -hmm. so we can start plan our mission and we touch the screen we decide where we want to go would you like to go to the moon Mars or Jupiter I think Mars Mars all yeah. right let's choose a Mars mission and there's a variety of different uh, vehicles that we can use. We can do a rocket, a spaceship to get to Mars. We can do the lander onto the surface or we can do a rover and drive around on Mars. Yeah, let's do the rover. Rover, yes. Yeah. All right. If you'll tap your screen to pilot. All right. All but right. I'm not the pilot. You, you pilot, okay? <laughs> I'll pilot. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're going to drive a space rover on the surface of Mars and we're going to try and find a location on the surface that they have um, put up a space pod over there and we're going to try and see if we can successfully navigate where we need to go. Okay. So I guess these little people who come up here on the right, they kind of give you some instruction? Yes, those are our fellow astronauts and they're giving us information on how to drive, uh, if we have to worry about any weather or uh, anything like that. They're going to help us give us background information. Okay. So are you pretty good at this? Um, I, I've crashed a few. Okay, okay. <laughs> we'll you're see doing if we can now? make it this time. You're, you're doing good now? We're going to follow the green symbol there, and that's going to help us navigate where we need to go. Mm -hmm. But if you decide to, you can always just kind of take your own trail. And oh, oh, oh. Uh-oh. Oh, uh -oh. No. Uh -oh. and uh -oh. we crashed again. <laughs> So this, this gives you your speed and you can start and stop with this, right? Your yes. Joystick. Okay. Yes, that's how fast we're going, where, the direction we're going to go, and um, you know, if we run into some craters or up a mountain, but we do get a second chance. Um, it also tells me the damage that I've done to my vehicle, so mm -hmm. I have a little bit of damage, and we're also getting ready to go into a dust storm, mm. uh, which can be dangerous. and. Especially for a rover, if you get too much dust in your mechanical parts, we could have some problems. So we're going to try and go around our dust storm and locate our space pod. And typically, how long does a mission like this take? Uh, it kind of depends on the driver. Mm -hmm. uh, how fast you go, whether or not you take little detours to explore the surface of Mars. Um, things like that, how many times you crash, which <laughs> looks like we're going to again. Um, <laughs> and it looked, like the space, it looked like the space pod was so close, but I guess it wasn't. It did. We've got to go yeah. around this little mountain range, I think. So uh, here we go. Autopilot. Oh, evidently I wasn't doing well enough, and they've enabled autopilot, so I right <laughs> myself. Now, is there ever a point where it will stop because you've crashed too much? Um, at some point it will, yeah, it'll give mm. you a few more chances and then it'll say maybe you need to try again. Um, right. So, but uh, so far we're, we're on our third try and I think it might let us go through. Okay. So what's the purpose? You're navigating. What am I? Just uh, watching? I'm piloting. Um, you would be navigating on different uh, spacecraft that you can drive. Um, the navigator would have more activity to do. Okay. Um, it might be adjusting the thrust, it might be adjusting the angle for mm -hmm. a landing, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Uh, okay. For the rover, it's, it's mainly the pilot. Okay, gotcha. And I'm perfectly fine with that. 
Uh, you might do better than me. We, we've crashed a few here, a few times here already. But and it looks like we're going to again. Oh, no. But, but Lee, what are right. some other um, parts of this exhibit that you really, really love? Uh, there's also uh, navigation screens that mm -hmm. you can use, and they give you some background about your location. So if you're going to want to go to the moon or Mars or Jupiter, they'll give you more information about where you're going. Okay. Uh, there's also some science screens that will give you information about the science and technology that you're using to get there. So background information about the rockets or the landers or the rovers, how they're put together, their different parts, that kind of thing. All right, Lee. Well, we're excited about this. We can see how educational it is, but fun at the same time. And that's what you want. Definitely. Yes. All right. So thanks, Lee. Good luck thank on the rest of the game. Don't finish. Well, thank Go you, ahead and finish, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for tuning in as well. We're not done yet. In just a few moments, we're going to go across the hall and speak with Allison Wiedrich at the Maria B. Howard Art Center about their spring exhibits. You're watching City Beat. We'll be right back. Marie, you have pre-diabetes. Pre-diabetes? I don't have time to eat right or exercise. I'm a busy mom. Oh, you're a busy mom. Yeah. This is great news. Busy moms never get pre-diabetes. Wait, what? Let me just... Yeah, this is all the people at risk for pre-diabetes and way over here. Busy moms. No? Hello and welcome back to City Beat. If you're just tuning in, got to say a big thank you to Lee White at the Children's Museum and Science Center. She told us all about their latest exhibit called Be the Astronaut, so definitely check that out. And now we're across the hall at the Maria V. Howard Art Center with arts curator Allison Wiedrich, who's been on the show many times before. Happy to be back. Thank you yeah, for having me. Yeah, and thank you for coming back today. Yes. And this, I, I told the viewers earlier this is an exciting show. And it's really exciting over here because you have a lot of things going on for your spring exhibits this season. Yeah. And we're standing right now in front of the Charles Killebrew collection. Yes. So, you know, I, I've heard of Mr. Killebrew and his wonderful photographs, but mm -hmm. what, what else can you tell me about him? Well, he's sort of a local celebrity. I'm sure there are people in Rocky Mountain who know way more about Charlie Killebrew than I do, mm -hmm. but I'll give it my best shot. He's a photographer. He, photo he did photographs for the Telegram at the time. He had his own studio, so he did a lot of studio photography. Um, and he also, people don't know this, but he did a lot of aerial photography as well. So he has a collection of photographs of surveying uh, Rocky Mountain and other surrounding areas. So you can see what the land looked like, you know, in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s. Wow. So he did, a, he did a lot and his collection of photographs is now at UNC Wilson Library. Mm -hmm. Roswell Library donated the collection to them with understanding that they would bring it back to us in Rocky Mount, which they have, that's why it's here. Hmm. And uh, their collection is over 450,000 negatives wow. taken by Charles Killebrew. Okay, so how many of those? I know it's yeah. not close to 450,000, <laughs> no. but how many do you have on display here? We have about 56 on display here, mm -hmm. including an intro panel, which is behind us, and an aerial photograph, photograph as well. Um, and they cover a range of topics, so everything from uh, education, so there's a couple school photographs, uh, there's entertainment, so movie theaters and singers. There's one of uh, Kay Kaiser on display. Hmm. Uh, there's some politicians. A lot of politicians went through Rocky Mountain, the surrounding area. So there's a, a JFK photograph and a Lyndon B. Johnson photograph here. Uh, we also have some industry. So the first Hardee's is, on, is photographed here. Um, and some industry as well. So there's some uh, process pictures of um, harvesting and planting tobacco and then selling it. And there's even a picture of June German that usually took place in a tobacco warehouse. Mm. So a very wide variety of photos on display. So how did you choose these? And some of them make sense because Kay Kaiser was big, June German was big here, yeah. a lot of historical elements here, but how did you choose some of yeah. the other photographs? Well, I didn't choose them. Mm -hmm. uh, Stephen Fletcher from UNC Wilson Library was the one who curated everything and selected everything. Okay. Um, and he said that he was trying to, originally he was trying to find a photograph every year from the 40s to the 70s. That, of course, didn't quite happening for him. Mm -hmm. But uh, what he did find was a lot of photos that he felt represented the people of Rocky Mount, but also what made Rocky Mount so special. So that's why he tried to get such a variety. So you'll see all shapes and sizes, um, all different kinds of landscapes. You'll see automobiles and houses and mm -hmm. cars and events and all kinds of stuff. So I think he did a really great job 
to capture the diverse history of Rocky Mountain. Definitely, that's yeah. one of the things I noticed. And one of the things I asked you too was, yeah. what does Charlie Killebrew look like? Yeah. And interesting, <laughs> he's on this picture. Point yeah. him out to us. So Charlie Kill Killebrew is right here. He's okay. the one holding the cat. Mm -hmm. um, and this was um, a staged photo, of course. Um, this is him and some folks that worked with him at his studio. The photo was taken at his studio, mm -hmm. which still stands. It's on Main Street. And I believe the building is up for sale right now. So, okay. um, but it still stands, and this was taken in his studio. Because he passed away. He did. Okay. He did. Okay. He did pass away. And I believe he's succeeded by his daughter. I don't know her name, but I believe that there's still some of his family surviving. So. All right. So very interesting. Looking forward to, to going through. I've, I've had a I've, I've seen a little bit of it, but I want to see yeah. some more, too, and, and encouraging folks to come out as well. Perfect. Now, another um, exhibit that you have on display, which I think you've had before, is mm -hmm. where the dream began. Yes. Yeah. You sort of have an affinity for King. You continue to kind of focus on him. Yeah, I do. He's mm -hmm. not only really important to um, our community because he spoke here. He said, mm -hmm. as I have a dream riff for the first time a year before he said it in D.C., mm -hmm. uh, which is really special to our history, but also just on a personal level. I've always really admired King. Um, I did a lot of research on, on him when I was in college still, and so he just has a very special place in my heart. But um, I try to put that exhibit, Where the Dream Began, on display every spring. Mm -hmm. um, I originally curated it in 2016 in conjunction with Origins of the Dream, the project that um, Jason Miller from, I believe it's NC State, that, right. that did that project. And so I did it for that. But I try to keep it on display as often as I can because the history is important. And also it gives us an opportunity to show off part of our permanent art collection as well. Okay, so what is a part of that display for those who've never seen it? So the panels themselves are go through the history of Rocky Mount. It talks about our railroads and how uh, travel was very easy to get to Rocky Mount, which made it very easy for people like Booker T. Washington and Martin Luther King to visit. Um, and it talks about their history, their connections to Langston Hughes, and sort of what happened after these visits to Rocky Mount and how they've made a lasting impression. So that's what the exhibit's about. And the permanent collection art that's on display are a couple of sketches of Dr. King. Um, a couple pieces we have on display from Cynthia St. James, a famous African-American artist from California. Mm -hmm. um, and then a couple other pieces from our collection that um, don't always get to see the light of day. So, All right. Very so happy we're, to have it on display. We're on the second floor. Where yes. the dream began is on the first floor, right? It is. Yep. Okay. So you also had the have the handcrafted art juried show. Yes. Yes. Now yes. where is that located? It's here? right behind this wall, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and it is a collection of about forty art pieces from artists around the country. And it was selected by Wendy Earl, who's with Sika. She's our curator at Sika. That's mm -hmm. the southeastern. Center for Contemporary Art. I always get one of those seats. You wrong. got it. You I got, got it. I got it right that time, though. <laughs> um, and so she uh, juried the show, and our winners have been selected. And so when visitors come, they can see who won and who is on display. There's some really, really interesting and innovative pieces on display. Okay, so yeah. I'm a novice when it comes to art. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about what, what does juried mean? Juried means uh, artists from around the country can submit to our juried show mm -hmm. and a blind juror uh, will select the top picks for the show. And blind jurying essentially means all they have to work with is a photograph, um, a list of mediums used, sometimes size or weight, um, but there's no indication of the artist's name, where they live, any indication of who they might be. Mm -hmm. And the juror can only use these images to make her final selections. And then those pieces come to the Arts Center and in person the juror will pick the winning pieces from the show. Gotcha. So yep. that's, that's good. That's yeah. fair to it, do it that way. It is. I, I yeah. think it's a very fair process. Very and we fair. always get a very different show. So not any one artist always gets into the show, which I think is really special. Mm -hmm. Um, your teaching artist exhibition mm -hmm. yes. is another exhibit here. Nine yes. artists are featured. Yes, nine okay. artists are featured from the art education building. Mm -hmm. So the people who are on display or the artists on display in that show are all currently teaching workshops, programs, and classes throughout the spring. Okay. So I'm really hoping that this will bring some awareness to not only their talent, mm -hmm. but also just the wide variety of classes and programs and workshops we have going on in the mm. Imperial Center. Mm -hmm. So they display a variety of different things. Then. Yes, they do. Yeah. Everything from uh, wood and furniture to some ceramic work and paintings mm -hmm. and all kinds of stuff. So you'll see a little bit of everything. And it's really impressive just how talented we have 
the, how talented people are in our community. We have a lot of artists here. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have art on display from Nash Rocky Mount Schools, the Rocky Mount Senior Center. Tell me a little yes. bit about that, what that entails. So uh, those shows aren't up yet, but they're going to be coming soon. Uh, Nash Rocky Mount Schools will be here in, uh, I think, in a month in March. And then in April, we have our uh, Silver Arts Show. Mm -hmm. and the Silver Arts Show is something that the Senior Center does. And it's the senior games, and every year the senior games go on, and we display the arts portion of it. And mm -hmm. that usually includes some literature as well, so you can read some of the short stories and poems that community members have written. Okay, yep. that is really interesting. Yeah. yeah, so lots and lots going on yes. this spring. Now, when can folks come out and, and see some of this great art, Allison? Well, they can come out Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Sundays 1 to 5. And the Art Center is always free to visit. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about um, passing go or collecting $200 or anything like that. <laughs> you can just come right in and enjoy all the exhibits. Uh, we also have some interactive exhibits. So we're great for families with kids. Uh, we have our Kiva Planks exhibit that's always on display mm -hmm. and our Maria B. Howard Life of Creativity exhibit that has everything from drawing to building and we have some electronic touch screens in there. So we're a pretty well-rounded space. Gotcha. Yeah. And before I go, it was one question I forgot to ask you because you're relatively new here yeah. and you're not from Rocky Mount. So what made you do this Charlie Killebrew collection? Well, um, UNC Wilson Library reached out to me because of their arrangement with Braswell Library. Mm -hmm. uh, part of the donation, as I mentioned, was uh, contingent on them promising to bring it back to the community and displaying it and celebrating it in some way. And so really UNC Wilson Library reached out to me. They liked our space and they wanted to use our space to display it. And I was, of course, happy to do that. And I'm hoping that in February we'll be scheduling um, a presentation with the Braswell Library and UNC Wilson Library in order to better communicate to the citizens of Rocky Mount the mm -hmm. history of Charlie Killebrew. So Braswell Library will be able to express what they know and Stephen Fletcher of UNC Wilson Library can talk about his selection process, how they're going to digitize the collection, what they do to preserve the collection, that kind of thing. All right, exciting yeah. stuff. <laughs> so thank you, Allison, thank for you. being on City Beat today. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, and thank you for tuning in as well. Fun time, so make sure you make, make your way out here to the Imperial Center for the Arts and Sciences to see the latest exhibit, Be the Astronaut, and to see these spring exhibits on display at the Arts Center. And how long are they on display, Allison? Until April 21st. All right, April 21st, so you've got some time. All right, thanks for tuning in to City Beat. I'm Tamika Keenan-Norman. We'll see you in a few weeks.